Welcome to today's class. I'll be going through the explanation of practical four. So with practical four, right? Practical four, you're basically blurring an image, right? So by blurring an image, it's like, it's like, for example, you can imagine when, when you're walking outside, right? And you are squinting your eyes, right? So you make you, you sort of like, let me see. So, uh, blurred images, right? So, blurred images, right? So, I think this, yeah, so this should make sense now. So, you see this image over here. There's a normal image and then there is it, there it is on the side, it's blurred. We call this blurred, right? So basically how, this practical, it's just meant to like teach you on how to play images, how it works on the, on the low level, right? Under the hood, because all it is, this blading of images is basically using what we call a kennel, which is a three by three matrix. So a three by three array, an array with three rows and three columns. So let's read and see there are many different operations which can be applied to existing images right so you take an existing image which is the image that you have and then you apply some calculation some formula and then the image becomes blurred so several of these are from a family of algorithm right called kernel convolution filters so it's called kernel convolution filters right um, these algorithms all operate in the same way Right, they all operate in the same way. So they operate by calculating a weighted average of all the pixels around a given point and setting the pixel at that point in a new image to this new value. So it's it's a very simple. You get a pixel, and then that pixel you 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 multiply it. Uh, you you multiply that pixel using that kernel and then sum up all the values and then divide it by the number of values you're adding up, which is 369. Summing up, um, okay, Gaussian blur filter, and then edge detection filter. Okay, so they're using different approaches, right? So there's different, it's still, it's still the same thing, right? You're calculating an average of points. So let me try to demonstrate this. It's still the same thing. It's just there's a slight variation between the algorithms, but then at the end of the dates, they're all the same. So create a new diagram. Um, let me call it kernel. So how do we go about doing this? Like, how do we apply the kernel filter? Right? So it's, 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 a, it's a very simple once you understand the formula. So how do you go about doing it? You're going to have your image, right? So what I'm going to do is, I hope this is going to work the way I want it to work. So let me do this. So let's say this is 128, something like that, right? And then this image over here, I'll change, I'll, I'll just change the color. So let me resize the, text so that it's visible so there's our pixel right so what i'll do is i'll copy and paste multiple pixels next to each other like this so that it's so that i can demonstrate what i'm trying to explain so let me see which other color can i use okay okay so i'm just going to alternate between these two colors and then there we go. And then, okay, just let me just play around with the colors at this point. Because I want to show you that there are different pixels. I'm just going to leave it as 128, right? Remember that we're going to have multiple rows and columns, 700 by 700 or 400 by 400. This this just has six row, six, uh, three, col three columns and two rows right these are two by three two rows and three columns so what happens is 
how do you calculate the how do you now do the convolution the kernel convolution filter how do you apply that you calculate average of the pixels around that given point so so what does it mean so for example um okay so let me do this i think it should uh, let me see one two okay yeah so that's fine let me change this to 23 i'm just putting random values there so that they are unique obviously it depends on the image itself so there's the different values right at different pixels so now you need to apply the kernel filter or uh, convolution filter which is a three by three matrix or three by three array so you're going to take in a three by three array which is so for example like this and then apply that to the image so basically you take this three by three array and you apply it at every single pixel starting at the corner they apply it at every single pixel every single pixel so i don't know how i'm going to demonstrate it using a laptop if only i had a tablet it would be easier to to demonstrate it because i would def I'll just draw the thing so let me let me try to use paint so what happens is it, it you take you're going to have that that um you're going to have your pixels right so let's say it's going to be 128 right um and then 10 and then 10 just random values and then 171 and then 150 and then 70, right, and then 200. Um, okay, this is a bad. And then 40, I'm just using different values so that it's easier to picture. And then 10, right? So you can imagine this is our array, right? Our image, this is our image. And then we're going to have the three by three, three basically three by three. It's three rows, three rows and three columns. Convolution filter, which is that array. So let me see here. One, two, one. So it's going to be one, two. Damn, this is bad. Tablet sometimes is needed in situations like this. So it's going to be one, two, one, and then you're going to have two, four, two, two, four, two, and then you're going to have one, two, one. So one, two, one, like this, right? So now how are you going to apply this kernel convolution filter? You're going to go pixel by pixel, which means value by value, each value one by one. So how does it apply? Let's take, for example, this point here. This point here, this center, which is 150, right? How does it apply? So you apply it in such a way that you also use these values around it, which is 128, the, ver the value surrounding that 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 pixel right and then you take these values from this from this array and then you multiply them right so how does it do that so let me just open the tag let me open the there's a diagram there's a this thing that yeah, that's playing here so if you check right it goes pixel by pixel so starting there at that at that it, it, start, it, it uses each pixel and then you, you take the value from the corresponding filter array and then you multiply 
So it just that he is doing it way too fast than I can demonstrate. Uh, so let me open Notepad and let's just do one of the calculations. Yeah. So I'm going to close this, this. Don't save. So how, how, how will you calculate? What's, what's the formula? Basically, you multiply the two arrays, right? Um, come on. Let me do this instead. OK, so you multiply the two arrays, right? Well, you take that array, you, you, you multiply that pixel using that array. After multiplying, you calculate, you, get, you divide by the number of values that you've you, so you, you multiply and then you add up those multiplied values to get a sum. After getting a sum, then you can calculate the average of that sum. So let's say, for example, this is our pixel that we're focusing at. That's the pixel one to change. How do we change that? We're going to multiply that pixel correspond corresp with the corresponding value inside the array at that specific point, right? You see 150 is at the center, so I'll multiply it by this four at the center. 128 is there by the corner, so I'll multiply that by one. 10 is there at the top, we'll multiply that by two. And then 10 is at the corner, I'll multiply it by one. So let's do the calculation. So it's going to be 150, which is that center, times the center from my filter array, which is four, plus the, let's start at this corner, plus what 128, which value in that array is at the corner? It's the same corner as this one. It's one. One is at the corner. So I'm going to say 128 times one plus 10. 10 is, is above the center. What's what value is above for above the center just for inside the array that we are using to mod to change the image? It's going to be two. So I'm going to say 10 times two. And then I'm going to continue plus. OK, there's still space there. And then now I have this 10 on the corner. Which value is, is at the corner here? It's under, it's one. It's at the corner. So I'm going to say 10 times one plus. Which and then now we go down to the second row, which is 171. What value if you look at 171, it's it's on the left of the center. Which value is on the left of the center? Basically, on the left of four is two. So it's going to be 171, right? This 171 times this two. So plus 171 times two, and then plus four, we've already multiplied the center 150. There it is, we already multiplied that. There it is. And then now we need to multiply 70 by its corresponding position, by the corresponding position in the other array. 70 times 2, so plus 70 times 2. Plus. Now we go to the last row 200, 200 times. 1 plus 40 times 2, right? There's 40, there's 2, they're the same position. And then now we are left with the last one 10 times. 1, you see, times 1. So plus 10 times 1, which is going to be equal to, remember we're trying to find an average, right? So trying to find an average. So this is going to be 150 times 4, which is 600. Plus uh, 128 times 1 is just 128. Plus 10 times 2 is 20. Plus 10 times 1 is just 10 plus 171 times 2, which is 342, plus 70 times 2, which is 140, plus 200 times 1, which is 200, plus 40 times 2, which is 80, plus 10 times 1, which is 10. And then now we add up the values. So it's going to be 600. Let me use my calculator plus 128 plus 20 plus 10 plus 342 plus 140 plus 200 
plus 80 plus 10, which gives me 1,530, right? Then we still need to find the average. So the average now is going to be, or the mean is going to be 1,530 1, divided by the number of values that I summed up, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right, so it's nine values divided by nine. So this would be, let me use my calculator. So this would be divided by nine, 110, 70. So now, since our main focus, remember, our main focus is the pixel at the center. So the value that we get, we're going to change that pixel at that center that uh, where we currently are. So therefore 150 should be changed to 170. Then that's going to gray out that image. That's going to blur, not gray out, blur the image. So this 170, after we get it, we're going to have to change. So basically what we do, right? We are, you know, in order to avoid messing up the original image, we just create a new image and we start putting at that corresponding position, we put the 170 right at that center. Then we calculate, we use this one, we take this one as our center. And then we also take this one as our center. We take this one as our, we treat that one as our center. We treat that one as our center. We treat this one as, as our center and so forth and so forth. And then every time when you treat that thing as a center, you use the surrounding pixels to calculate the value to get the answer. So we'll do that. Um, let me see. Then there's, there's going to be a lot of error handling here because what happens when, let me look at this diagram, right? What happens when you're at the corner there, right? So let me show you, let me try. Okay, this is not, it's hard to explain it to the computer. This need, needed a tablet where I can like type down and draw. So. You look at this pixel, right? So just imagine, just imagine, right? We have that array that we're going to multiply by. So, so that means here, you see, we're going to have some empty boxes, right? If we treat 128, this one is our center. So that means there'll be empty here. Because remember, it's a three by three. So th if this is our set, that means this is my left, this is my bottom right, this is my bottom middle. And then, so this is now the three by three. This is the three by three one, right? So if I'm at the, if I'm at the edge, right, like this, I need to make sure that since there's nothing there, I just multiply it by zero because there's, there's no, there's no pixel there. So usually when you do that, according to the computer file, YouTube channel, the person explaining it, he said that if you, the thing is I haven't solved it. I mean, it's it's not my prank at the end of the day. So I haven't done the prank. I don't know how the image actually turns out. But then he said, if you have the corner, the, since there's, sub, there's missing values, the, the, the corners tend to be a little bit clear, right? they, they're, grayed out, they're blurred out just a little bit since there's missing values here. So when you're at the center here, let's say this is said, you see there's values surrounding it. These values are there. So therefore this one will be will literally be blurred out. So it's like the further you go away from like that center or whatever or that, and then you go closer to the corner, it becomes less blurred, right? It's like it's like yeah you, you press the is it is it autofocus or whatever on on the phone I forgot what feature is that when using the camera so basically if you remember when you use a camera I think it's called autofocus if I'm not mistaken let me just search autofocus images is it autofocus um I'm not sure I forgot what the actual what's the right terminology for it. But then it's like, if you if you know, I don't know if, if many people know that, but then there is, 
there is this thing when uh, let me say image of someone's face right so what I, when i say the autofocus thing uh, let me try to show you what i mean so if you remember if you remember or if you know there's a feature in your phone whereby you can the the face can be the only thing that's visible and then around the area it's blurred out right around this area is blurred out so what i'm saying is that according to this formula this approach the kernel convolution filter the further away you are you, like the, the closer you are at the edge it becomes less blurred out so with the phone the way web, whereby this center was more clear they applied those kernel filters just know that that's what they applied under the hood and you will implement that and see it for yourself so you it's like vice versa for 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 us right so at the center it's going to be actually more blurred out around this radius right around the center but then the further you get away it's going to still it's still a bit clearer right the closer you get to the corner why is it going to be clearer because when you get to the corner if you notice there's missing values here if I also go to this corner here, there'll be missing values here around. There's missing values. So therefore this corner will be less, will be blurred in a, in a less manner compared to this one whereby the, all the values are there. So that's pretty much what you have to do here. I hope it's a bit clearer. So if you check here, if you check this diagram, you see we start at seven, right? you see they'll put that array we start at seven and then we multiply by the corresponding value since here there's no values this will be zero and then this 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 other four values we'll use them and then we put we, we change that pixel from seven to nine after getting that average so basically the, the output image that we're going to have it's going to be an output image of averages so you pick a point so this is our kernel right basically our three by three array so if you check zero, all these values that are multiplying by. So the center five times um, this per times seven plus the shutter is moving way too fast. Yeah, but then I hope you get the point. You started that corner there, and if you check your image, right, towards the end there, it's going to be a little bit grayed out, a little bit. A little why, why do they keep saying greater a little bit blurred you see they even wrote the formula here zero times seven times that and then you add that up you get a sum and then you have to divide it by the number of values you've summed up to get an average and then you put the average there so we always calculating a weighted average i hope this is a bit clearer now so if what after doing all that, you see the image will be blurred out, right? And there's different detection algorithms, right? Well, filter algorithms. There's a there's the Gaussian blur filter. Then there's edge detection filter. If you check the if you click on the link that's there on the PDF, it's going to take you to here, right? There's different formulas. So as you can see here. There's the ident identity matrix. It's you see, it's just the image itself, right? And then now we're going to have to apply this, and then you see the image changes based on the values, the kernel that we're using. That three by three array is just there's the fancy name for it is just called a kernel, but then it's actually just a three by three array, three rows and three columns. That's what we mean by three by three. There's the sharpen al al algorithm. Which may which sharpens the image so that it's a bit it's clear. Then there's the box blur to blur the image, and then there's the Gaussian blur. It uses an approximation, which is this. So after doing after multiply after. So you see he, the box blur right the normal one, you use your kernel and then you divide by nine, because remember, times one over nine is basically dividing by nine. So you're going to sum up everything here, divide it by multiply from the image one times that corner, one times that, what one times the other one, this center times that pixel that I've picked. And then you sum all all, all those multiplied values and then divide by the nine, then divide by nine to get a mean, right? Or the average. 
then the Gaussian approximation, you don't actually divide by nine, you divide by 16. Then there's the Gaussian play using a bigger kernel, which is a five by five kernel. They even showed you it's a five by five kernel. And you see, I think it becomes more blurred. Yeah, you see, it's, it's more blurry, this one. And then there's unsharp masking, blah, blah, blah. I think for you guys, it's pretty, it's going to be a straightforward approach. You just use the box player, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see what, which one they want you to use. By calculating the weighting average of all the pixels around a given point, you see, you always calculate around that given point that you've cho you chose. So if I choose this corner, I'm currently at the corner, right? Around it, which basically within that radius, around it, I, I calculate and then I multiply. Once I'm done multiplying, I go and change the, the pick, that average that I get, right? I change the pixel that I chose, which is that corner. I now change that to, let's say, the, my average that I got is 43. Then I change that center, that pixel that I chose. Then I move on to the next pixel. So this one now acts as my center. And then I look at the values around it. I calculate and get an average using my three by three array or that kernel, and then find an average of the mean and then change this point that I'm that I've that I chose. And then I move on to the next point and so forth and so forth and so forth. I keep doing that until I'm done with my calculation. So I think you're just gonna use is referred to as a weight, right? Yeah. You're just calculating an average. So they they say it's it's better to create a new image than to change the, the existing one. So you should take take in and I think you should take in the array and then change that pixel. Basically store the values, the changes that the changes in a new array. Remember, each array represents an image. So you need to use an, a, a new image in order to see the change so that you can have the old one. And you can also have the new one and see, oh, so there's my image. It's blurred out now. So this one is used, was using a different filter, which is the um, edge detection filter. This one is using the Gaussian filter. And then it changed to this. It says the changes are subtle, right? They are small. You can you can't really tell. But then if you if you really look at it there, look this one. Look at this one. It's sharpened, like it's clear, right? And then look here, it's a bit blurred and it has changed. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's all you have to you have to know here. Just know when they say kernel, they are, they mean the three by three array. That's all. That's what it means. And three by three just means three rows and three columns. That's all it means. And if you look at it, well, it's three by three. You see three three rows, three columns. So that's all you have to do here. But then remember, uh, before I end the video, remember each pixel in this image, right? This would be a grayscale image. For you guys, each pixel is an RGB. So you have red, green, and blue. So it's actually each each point is red, green, and blue. So your formula is going to be now different, right? It's going to be multiplying all the different values the RGB value, the RGB values, the red, green, and blue, by that, the by that value inside the kernel array or that array. So let's say I'm multiplying by four. I multiply red by four. I multiply green by four. I multiply blue by four. It's because it's it's a P3 image. It's RGB image. This one only has each point or each pixel is an int. So for the one that I was making, right, I basically had this which is pixel, right? That's what I had. For you guys, each pixel is not an integer. Each pixel is going to be an RGB color, pointer, pointer, underscore pixels. So you multiply the red, green, and blue, all of each, each pixel by four, or by that value in that kernel, in that array. So I hope it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So I'm going to end the video here. I don't want to make it too long.